So despite going through a very strange spell during the last video where we just seem to be unable to score goals at all, it does appear that we are finally back on the right track in Europe at the very least, and the league seems to be plugging away nicely. We've managed to strengthen the squad in little ways over the winter period, but my aim really is to sort that sort of stuff out in the summer, depending on how much money we're working with. But we do still have a lot of battles to fight today, and one of the battles I'll be fighting today is to try to maintain some kind of water in my body, as it is the hottest I can ever remember it being in this room right now. By the end of this video, I'm going to look like the old lady from Titanic. Biggest difference is I'm not going to string you along for three hours and then throw the diamond into the ocean. As always, if you have been enjoying the series up to this point, drop a like on the video. That would be most bloody fantastic. I really do appreciate it. And also, I appreciate the support on the slightly different video I tried out on Saturday. You're going to see a lot more of that from me over the coming months. Uh, hopefully, at least every two weeks. Hopefully, every week on Saturdays, though. It depends. But I want to make them good, so I'll take the time to make that work. And hopefully, you guys will enjoy those, along with all the other stuff we've got coming up. So there we go. Now, of course, we had the Besiktas second leg coming up at some point. But with us being 4-0 up from the first leg, I felt that it would be a nice time to just focus our attention back on the league for a little bit, just to sort of keep this one plugging away. We're still in a good position. We may well be six points off the top, but really we are essentially at the halfway stage of the season. So anything could still happen in the meantime. But I do think it is just going to really be a case of us and Norgeland battling over second spot. And I don't think we're really going to be able to pose a true challenge to FC Copenhagen until we can finally get a bit of cash in and really get the youngsters that I want to bring into this team and get them coming through. Because I know they're out there. I've found them. I'm going to do some more setup scouting today so that when the summer comes around, we've got an absolute gold mine to go through. And I'm really excited about that. But we need to make sure that we've got the money in the bank first. And that's what we're hopefully going to try and assess today. So I think that's probably going to do it for us at this point. We're pretty much set. It's weird how Desla Gorda, a guy that really isn't that good in this team, continues to find football for us every single season. Because there's always just that little gap and he's just the man that every single season manages to fill it. But I really like the look of that midfield and I really like the look of that bench that we've got to back up that midfield. The additions of Sumare, Canalets, those types of chaps really helps us. And hopefully it's onwards and upwards from here. I mean, Carlson's goal scoring record this season is fantastic. You know the targets I set for them in the last video, which was Valencia to get 25, Carlson to get 33 goals. If they hit both of those targets, I mean, Carlson I'm happy with either way, but I think Valencia does need to get to 25 in order for me to even be like, yeah, okay, fine. But truth be told, I am obviously looking at other strikers because... I do not know what it is about strikers in this system. I know that they can work as I've been testing it on my other save. So hopefully it is just a case of finding the right guy for the job. And maybe Valencia is that guy. And one slight problem we do have actually is that Turnison is refusing to sign a new deal at the moment and he only has like one year left on it. So that could be a bit of an issue for us, but more of a bridge will cross in the summer. As Valencia is in on goal here, it's a bit of a tight angle. Hopefully he can turn provider for someone and he's found Carlson and he scored. Christopher Carlson, 24th goal of the season. But that is really nice play from Valencia. Sometimes he plays more like a deep lying forward. He plays like an advanced deep lying forward, an advanced lying for an advanced forward almost. Carlson again. Valencia with nice run. Silla's on the wrong foot, but he's found Valencia. Valencia's actually got the space here. Get oh, uh, what on earth? I mean, it's actually a nice disguised pass. Fires it to Valencia again. Runners beyond. One of them is Silla. He's through and he's on his left foot. Can he drop it home? No. Big save from our former goalkeeper, Denise. Mustafa falls it in and it's all the way through and Silla will collect this. And is there a, a suitable runner for him? Or he's going to have to bring it out himself. He is bringing it out himself, and that's fine. They're actually allowing it to happen. Finds Brenner. Here we go. Carlson, there's the bump for Valencia. This is perfect. On his left foot, gets it through. Has to score here, and he's dinked it over the crossbar. That's a shame. Drops it all the way, and Carlson's there, and he's... Look at this man. Terry Clotis cross. Christopher Carlson, again, a brace. He's not just all about set-piece goals. He is just an absolute machine. He only has 10 finishing, and most importantly, he only has 8 heading. And yet, because of his height, he just seems to be able to score them. Now, it does help when Terry Cloty is putting a world-class ball after world-class ball, but it is 2-0. It's another 2 for Chrissy Carlson. Perez to, Mad to Valencia. If Carlson's there, he could go again here. Christopher Carlson, he's tried the impossible, honestly, but you've got two goals already. Why? Why not? But it could also prove dangerous for them if they were to lose the ball in this area. So good ball through though. Mamara, and he's well saved by Makacek. That was a brilliant stop. Oh, it's a good position for Breda here. Really good position, and he drills it low. 3-0 to Sinius. We do love a good 3-0. Eighth goal of the season in the end there, actually. They must have played some uh, B-team games there. For Petter Breda, hasn't scored in a while. Lovely to see him slot that in the corner, though. Well, in the end, I just turned down the tempo and just sort of tried to protect the players, really, because we do have more important things coming up. After that third goal, it was easy-peasy time for us. And with this one out of the way, unfortunately, all our rivals are winning. There it is. OB nil, Sunius 3. Comfortable performance. Got the win in the end. Nice to see Petter Breda add a nice one on top of that to add to Christopher Carlson's. Valencia did a good job, though. I know he got the assist for the first goal, but after that, that, he was just making some really nice runs. He did have a couple of openings in this game. I would have liked to have seen him maybe take one of them, but still, 3-0 win. The main thing is the team won, but everyone else around us also managed to win. This is 
just going to be such a tough season. In fact, both of our main rivals also won by three goals to nothing. And Silke Ball pulled out a late victory over Esbia with 10 men to somehow still stay in this title battle slightly. They will eventually fade. It's just an inevitability, but it's mad that they could very well qualify for Europe next year if they carry on like this. I think they've already established such a huge gap that it's almost inevitable at this point. That minor little knock that Terry took is out for two to three weeks. That's really not ideal at all. He's not got the same ability as Cloty in these areas, but he's still got that physical presence to get round people. So nice little ball back. Hello! Oh, what a finish! Bastian Canaletz does make it 4-0 on aggregate. I think earlier in the episode, I said it was already 4-0. It wasn't. It was 3. But Bastian Canaletz scores his first goal for Sunioska. This might well be close enough for a goal, honestly. It's a good strike, and it's a great goal. It's just a brilliant goal from Atlam. It's 4-1 on aggregate. They're backing it sort of. Samson pops it through, and Sumari might not catch this. Oh, he's still got it! Shimanski! I mean, look at that. Well positioned on the rebound. It's 2-1 on the night. Kamil Shemansky. We're playing him and Madden Sailor up top here today to give some teams a rest here, some players a rest, and it's working. Oh, no. Perez with the back pass assist. And, oh, dear. Oh, slide tackle assist there to give them the goal. That's a shame. Denise with the ball downfield, and the ball's just flipped over the top here. Chegashan's in again. Oh, my God. <laughs> They've just scored two in like two minutes out of nowhere, and it's 3-2. What's going on? Well, no one near as smooth sailing as you might have imagined in this game, actually. Uh, we dominate the early stages of this game, like absolutely dominated it. But they got those three goals in that 15-minute spell out of nowhere and found themselves ahead at half time. And in the second half, we didn't really do a lot. But nevertheless, we did get the victory. Chengishan Atlan was out outrageous. But what I would say is... Um, Bostian Canales today was amazing in that midfield. He scored the goal, but he also just kept linking the play, putting these lovely balls through for everyone ahead of him. I really like him in this team. I think he's a great prospect for the future. So next round, there's just an insane plethora of quality sides in here. However, there are a few sides that I feel like we could beat. That means we're going to get to play Liverpool, though. Gladbach. <laughs> it's always Gladbach. They're in the groups with us for the last two seasons in a row. They screwed us out of the group winning spot this year. I didn't even think that was possible that you could get the team that you were in the group with in the second round. Okay, I guess you can. But there you go. So Gladbach finish above us in the group and then the reward is us. Uh, there you go then. So we're playing against Gladbach. Time for revenge and hopefully a quarterfinal shot. I'm actually right with that. Wins it back. Silla's got it. Carlson, run through for us. Alessini Silla's in on goal here. Can he finish across the goal? And he does. It's a great finish. It's lovely to see him back in the team, honestly. I have missed this man around the club. Sudiuska won. Rana's a nil. We need this win and hope that our rivals drop points. It is just end to end. Carlson with room to actually look up this time. Find Silla again. Oh, look at this man. He is carrying us through this game. Alessini Silla, Sudiuska 2, Rana's nil. I don't think this game has done it by any means. He's not going to be in the box to receive the header. But he might not need to be as Breda couldn't quite reach it, but he can fire this back inside perhaps for Boyce. Pops it through and Silla's on the end of it for a hat-trick. A hat-trick from central midfield on his right foot this time for Alessini Silla. What a game. I still think Ronalds might get a couple of goals in this one, but not at the moment. Back again, we need more goals. Somehow, we, our rivals are still equaling or better us in terms of score lines at the moment. Silla's popped one in. Carlson's header and it's 4-0 and it's now an assist for Alessini Silla. This is mental. 26th of the year for Carlson, but we are just doing our best to just keep putting goals up. Pull back inside for Silla. What's he got on the plate this time? Boyce! Oh, he scored! Silla gets an assist as well, and it's a fight, a fifth goal. Randy Boyce with his first goal as FC Copenhagen slapping their fifth goal of the night. You should see the scorelines of the other games. Luca bringing it forward now for Rana's. They could still get goals here. They've still got the quality in this team. Atlason, ball in, and Makacek just can't get there, and there you go. Adam Shavinsky gets one back for him. Javinsky in there. Oh, it's it's on target and it's in. Sverre Hexet gets one back for Ronas. Um, I think Hexet might be about to get another one back for him. And he has. It's 5-3. Uh, this has been coming the entire game. They were lucky not to have those goals earlier. I mean, we get the victory in the end. You can sort of see about how I clearly felt they were well in this match. And it was just an inevitability they were going to get goals eventually in this one. And in the end, it actually turned out to be a really strong performance from them as it goes. But Silla with, I mean, a 10 out of 10. He got three goals and assisted both of the other goals. I guess you could say he's had the game of his life. In other news, uh, FC Copenhagen beat Silkeborg 6-0. Yeah, they're starting to flex their muscle a little bit now. Uh, because, I mean, Silkeborg are still a decent team. They were fourth in the league for a reason. They've won a lot of games. Norsland is such a weird one. It was half time, and I thought, oh, well, I thought it was half time. Anyway, it was 0-0. And then I look up and suddenly they were 4-0 up in that game uh, with, well, literally four goals in eight minutes of match time anyway so yeah uh, we continue winning that's all we can really do at this point we just have to keep winning matches and just keep pressing on but at least we're scoring lots of goals valencia just needs to find some kind of space it's such a bad oh actually boys mad on sailor into the bottom corner we needed that this game has been a bad one but sifalele mad on sailor makes it one nil and of course we need this goal just to keep up with our rivals he's got the support and he's actually found a lovely pass for valencia straight off the bat valencia just continues to make the runs he could win a penalty here maybe Oh, win the foul. 
Oh, nice ball back across. It's a great finish from Christopher Carlson. Valencia again, providing the assist at least. Carlson scores his 27th goal of the season. He just keeps on going. Comfortable fashion. Then Matt on Sailor and Carlson grabbing the goals. It did take us a little while to really get going. In the second half, I made a little tweak. And we really sort of took off from there. But again, Valencia, uh, he was fine. He provided the assist. And that's the main thing. But we have to really consider, I think, in the summer. We need to make big moves in the striker department. But still, at least we keep winning. Once again, our rivals win. Norgeland win away. FC Copenhagen put another four goals past the team. And they have just found something lately. I mean, the gaps actually remain exactly the same. I mean, we're on for a ridiculous... We're having an extraordinarily good season at the moment. Our points tally at the moment is reading very, very high indeed, but it's not going to make any difference because they're on for like a record-breaking year and Norseland are just as good. Players like Clotio and uh, Boyce are going to be absolutely crucial in this game, I sense. Just providing that extra width. Pops it in. Carlson's header and it's in. The keeper, I think, has touched that into his own goal nearly. Carlson gets the goal. Clotio gets the assist, but I'm fairly certain that wasn't going in. Kanovic drops it into the path of Terry Clotio. Just takes his defender on. Now he just needs that one good pass. Finds Silla. Oh, he's done it again. Another assist for Terry and another goal for Alessini Silla. Two goals to us in the first half. Oh, this feels so cathartic. Basically, I think our plan in this game is just going to have to be, once again, see how quickly we can get the ball to Terry Clotie and see what he can do with it. He's just loitering there, waiting for another good chance to pop ball in. Silla's on the end of it. It's another goal for Silla, and it's another assist for Terry Clotie. Three assists in the same game for him, and Silla has just been on fire lately. Just holds the ball up brilliantly there to allow Canalitz to make that run. Back inside for Samson. So many runners. Can he find the right one? Samson through for Valencia, and he's scored. There we go. It's 4-0. It, this is what we needed in the group stage. Valencia makes the run. Samson finds a great pass. 4-0 up in the first leg. I don't even know what to say. It's ironic because it's not in any, I think it's almost identical nearly to the stats from the game that we had against them in the groups where we failed to beat them uh, with a 0-0 draw. And today we've come out there and hammered them 4-0. It's amazing, those things. But then Terry Clotie today had just a phenomenal performance. Three assists in this game. He ran the show. He was amazing out there. Every time he got the ball, he was just perfectly in the spot, looking for those little passes. Silla again, brilliant work. And that gives us a great chance at a quarterfinal berth. And our home form is looking spectacular. Even nice to see Valencia on the score sheet as well here, which is very important. He moves one step closer to 25 goals. So as luck would have it, we get a draw for the quarterfinal now to see who we could potentially face should we get through. I know we're falling up, but you can never tell with this team. Please just give it someone that I feel like we might have a shot against. Do you know what? Lazio or Nice, I think we might have a chance there, honestly. Close his ball. Carlson's header. And it is 1-0 to Sonny Oscar in front of basically an empty stadium. Close with another assist. Carlson up to 29 goals for the year. And we get an early lead. Mad on Sailor. To Yalanen to Carlson. Yalanen pops it through. Valencia on his left foot. Drops it home. There we go. 2-0 to Sonny Oscar. 2-2 two two now for Rafa Valencia. 19th, I think, goal of the season for him. He is just finding some form today. Terry picks it up. He's going to turn in field and have a little meander. Yalanen pops it up for Valencia. It's a really good oh, What a pass and what a finish from Rafa Valencia. It's 3-0. Two on the night for him now. Up to 20 goals for the season. Canalets now. Valencia dropping it short. Samson for Canalets. Bostian Canalets. It's 4-0. I mean, they're a poor side, but I see what I mean. This guy, when he comes into the team, he's got something. Yeah, that was a bit good. Uh, I made a change at halftime to go through the middle as we just weren't really focusing all that much. And it just really worked out for us. Two goals for Valencia. One for Chrissy Carlson, of course. And Boschin Canales. What a thunderous strike that was from him. And I think Norgeland didn't win for once. Well, there you go. Good news. We finally sneak back into second spot still, despite winning every single league game today. We are still sitting second by six points. Um, well, sorry, still six points clear of FC Copenhagen because they just will not stop winning. Um, Silkeborg have really dropped off. They were 4-0 defeated at home by OB this time. And we've gained a nine-point gap on them. And I think, I mean, they're going to get in the championship route, but they've got to worry about Midgeland coming up behind them at this point. Oh, you stupid man. Solomon Ido, red card in six minutes. It's a tough angle for him. If he could just find the right... Oh, it's a great finish. What a strike from Madon Sailor and the 10 men take a 5-0 well, lead on aggregate. Now, wow, that is some goal. Well played. That is quite some effort. To go down to 10 men after seven minutes and actually be able to win the match. And honestly, it was a very even game. We actually somehow kept on in this and actually got better in the second half. And Madon Sailor's goal. What a brilliant effort that is. 5-0 win. Why couldn't we do this in the group? I know we won away in the group, but we've made them look very average here. And I'm really, really pleased with that. I don't know what the Nice situation is, though. Oh, so Lazio do sneak through. Only by three goals to two, though. And we won both games. I don't know. I think we have a shot against Lazio, even if it's going to be a tight one. Big chance early on here for Venefjord. And it's, it's well saved, but on the rebound... Wimbo gives Silkeborg the lead. We cannot lose this game. Cloty. Cloty's had a poor game so far, actually. A rare one from him. Valencia pops it around the side. Silla's taken it into his stride. He's got no support, though. Pops it across and Bredo's put it into the empty net. Silkeborg won. Suni Oscar won. FC Copenhagen winning 2-0 at Norseland in the other game. So winning here is crucial. Breda. A little bit more space emerging now for us. Oh, shocking there. Carlson sides down and Mujadzic is gone. And get that second goal. Samson now to Boyce. 
bit of room. Finds Valencia, and he's on the end of it, and it is 2-1 to Sonny. He's got 21st goal of the season for Rafa. I think he will get to that 25. He's definitely improved again lately. She's that that half a yard and Carson's on the end of it and it is 3-1 31st I don't know I don't know exactly how many it is now it's over 30 and it's 3-1 and this is a big turnaround and we dug really deep when we needed to there like to go behind so early there and to get that red card for them we we actually made it count there with Valencia and Carlson grabbing the goal. That's huge because Norgeland lost to FC Copenhagen. FC Copenhagen are just running away with this now. But at least if we can start to pull a gap over Norgeland, that could be huge. Because this is the final game of the first stage. And we're going to enter the second stage with a plus 37 goal difference and a 51 points on the board already. Which is amazingly good. Um, FC Copenhagen just that little bit better. I think this is the best points tally we've ever had at this stage in the season as well. Three points now clear of Norgeland. It's kind of crazy that we came into today's video level on points with Silkeborg and we now find ourselves 12 points above them just a few matches later and we've won every league game today and are absolutely smashing it excellent news sort of Terry Clotes agreed a new contract I thought I'd just take a plump because of some of the performances I've seen lately again it was locked in the release clause there was nothing I could do about it couldn't even set an expiry date or adjust the release clause in any way it's now gone from 15.5 to 17 million so at the very least we're continuing to up the amount that we would potentially be lucratively getting if we were to lose him. He's going to be a star player, which I don't like, but I think if anyone deserves that, it's Terry. As much as the money would be good for losing someone like Terry Cloty, there's something about him in this match engine and the way he plays that I just don't know if we're going to ever be able to replicate. I've never seen anything like it before. He's just that good. I realise it isn't transfer with no time, but I just found this guy, Patrick Ilko, plays for Slovan Bratislava. Uh, obviously, it says he's an advanced playmaker. Wide one, interestingly, which is kind of good, although the speed would suggest otherwise. Obviously, he'd be a player for here. Um, that, that composure and finishing is absolutely superb as well. 18 years old. £800,000 release clause. These are the types of players we need to get. He's 18. He would be homegrown when he joined us. It's just an absolute no-brainer for me. Well, we've got our youth intake. That's very bad. <laughs> Honestly. We've got Michael Lawson. Okay. Oh, he's, mm, Actually, mm, well, crossing, he's not actually that bad. God, if he was a, just a bit taller or a better jumping reach, he'd be a, actually a really good centre-back with that tackling head. Look at the heading on him. Actually, he's more of a centre-back. I don't actually know. Thoughts, friends. What would you do with Michelle Lawson? He's got a weird breakdown of attributes where they want him to be a winger because he's got good crossing. As a wide centre-back, though, with that crossing ability, he could be quite effective there, I'd say, as the right wide centre-back. And there's also Christopher Eskilsson, who is a, well... He'd have to be more of this. He's very similar, actually, to the guy that we've just tried to sign from Slovan Bratislava in terms of his positions. And the other top talent is Bad Shazazai, who is a winger, but he's got okay tackling. His marking's trash. He'd have to be a sort of wingback type of player, I guess. So next gen is in, and we have three players on the list. Samson at number 17, Madon Sailor at number 19. He's actually lower than Samson, and Fernand uh, Hernandez, the keeper as well, all on the next gen list. Lovely news. Silla drops it through Carlson's header, and it's turned home by Turnison, and I think he is going to be on side there, firing it through for Boyce again. Just needs that right pass now, and it's Valencia in there, and it's two. Two goals. Valencia on the score sheet again. Lovely ball in, and we might win some games in this group stage. This is a rarity for us. Silla, Valencia's, yeah, he can't shoot from that kind of position. Boyce might be able to shoot. Oh, pops it back across for Breda, and it's 3 0. Petter Breda on the end of it. It's 3 0 to Midland in their game. Oh, sorry, to Norseland in their game over Midland as well. Both our friends are, of course, winning. Breda from quite the distance here. Oh, he scored it anyway. Wow, 4 0 to Sunny Oscar. Breda again. Two in as many minutes for him. Terry's actually been done a little bit there. And he has been done. Great block. Oh, the rebound. Oh, it's a free goal, though, from Mustafa Buzkurt. Breda to try to find Carlson with it, and he's done so. It is 5 1. Christopher Carlson yet again. I mean, in the end, again, extremely easy for us. Another five goal away win. We're just scoring goals now. This team is just that little bit better at the moment. And we just look like we can beat a lot of teams, but it's just going to come down to those two ma those two matches home and away against both Copenhagen and Norseland. We do manage to maintain our gap. Norseland do get a 3-0 victory uh, away at Midland, And of course, FC Copenhagen thump Silkeborg 5-0. I think that's their fifth consecutive league defeat. And they've gone from having a plus eight goal difference to minus 12. That's utterly mental. We've had this bid from Hammerby for Oscar Perez. Now, I normally wouldn't entertain something like this, but I've regretted that. I, I think Perez is a fine player, but I don't think he's great. And I think we overpaid for him and he wasn't a homegrown talent. And I think if we can shift him here, even if it is only for three and a half million pounds with a percentage of profit clause, 
I know that would leave us a bit light in the cloty area, but I think for the summer, it could also give us a bit more cash to spend when that summer comes around. I think we can do better than him in that role. And I think I might actually do this just because we'd still make two and a half million pound profit on the deal, which is a lot considering that I was unhappy with it in the first place. So I think I'm actually going to go ahead and do this. I've also had a bid from Jurgon for Scylla, but I'm not doing that. So I'd say things are pretty going swimmingly today up to this point. We've won, I think, every single league game, which is a nice... There's only been like five, but still, you've got to win them. And the only like, European game we lost was that weird one against Besiktas. We've been very good in all the other ones. This is a real test for us, though. I mean, when you look at the other teams left in this tournament, you're going to have to beat some quality sides to go any further than this. And I think we've still got one of the better draws out of all of this. So maybe we could go one step further. I don't know. But we are getting that Slovakian guy. So that's kind of cool. And with Perez leaving... We've got an extra 2.7 million rising as well. So that's going to give us even more money to work with in the summer. Terry Cloty's got a new contract. I'm trying to work ways to get more money on the table without selling Terry Cloty because we do need to find some extra cash. And since I know you guys like to see players, of course, drop them in the comments if you want to see other players and I'll try to show you them. I figured since Scylla has been absolutely ridiculous in this episode, uh, we'd give him a little preview. You can see why he's so good. He just... He doesn't have any consistency issues. He loves big matches. He's just a great player. He's really good. And bear in mind, the bid on the table for him at the moment is actually £6 million from Jorgon. He doesn't want to go there, though. So that's the issue. He's a bit upset because I didn't want to give him a brand new deal. Our home form in European ties has been absolutely imperative to us, even though there have been some weird stuff in that group stage. I think in these knockout games, those home forms, we have to take advantage of being good when we're in our home matches. And wow, they've actually still got a real player in the team. That's mental. Like, if we can find the quality to pull off a miracle here. Oh my god, we're already lead. Jakob Turnerson. Breda puts the ball in. And within two minutes, we take the lead. And Turnerson scored a couple lately. Lovely stuff. Pops it up for Breda. Can he finish from that angle? Oh, he's been fouled. No, he hasn't. And it's saved by Costarella. Bellavacqua. Ball in. Oh, it's such a good ball. And it's gone all the way through. And Ruben equalizes for Lazio. Their first opening of the whole match. This is what happens when you don't take your chances there, friends. Admittedly, that shouldn't have gone all the way through to him. I feel like either the keeper or the centre-back should have cut that out. But that's it. That's how it happens. Boyce. Hopefully, we can get back on the front foot again immediately. Boyce's ball in. Carlson's header. Saved by Costarella. Keeping a really good amount of pressure on Lazio at the moment. Forcing them along. In fact, never mind. Valencia might even have to go for this. Nope. Silla for Boyce. Again, he's into the box. Don't go out of the box this time. Carlson brings it down and scores. It's 2-1 as soon as and that is brilliant. Again, Christopher, 32 goals this season for Christopher Carlson. What a guy. Get that passing moving. Oh, he's going for back heels now. Christopher Carlson's in. He might be able to shoot here. No, he's going to be... Oh, he's been fouled. That's surely a foul. It is. We have a chance to go 3-1 up in the first half here. It will be Valencia from the spot. He's only missed one penalty so far for the club. And that was, of course, in Europe. And he hasn't done that there. It's Sunuska 3, Lazio 1, Valencia's 23rd goal of the season. He's closing in on 25 as well. I think we're proving a lot of people wrong with this performance here. 3-1 up at home against Lazio now. We're not in rugs anymore. We've taken it by the scruff of the neck after Christmas in Europe, as we often do, or certainly in most competitions anyway. Last year, I know we got knocked out a little bit earlier, I think. Breda's ball. Silla's in there and it's 4. Alessini Silla, 4-1 in the first half. <laughs> we only need one leg, friends. We only need one leg. We're like pirates. Cleared away. Boyce knocks it down for Carlson. Oh, Valencia's in. He's put it in. Valencia, can he get it back to his left? He's on his left foot and he has had it saved. Oh, no, Rafa, please. Oh, God almighty, mate. Oh, my goodness. I wasn't even commentating. Christian Bellavecqua. What a hit. How are they back in this? I mean, we've hammered Lazio in this first half. Absolutely smashed them. And they've scored their two shots of the game have both been goals. We're doing our best here. Cloti has struggled a little bit today. He's still doing fine, but nothing magical like we're normally used to seeing out of him, I suppose. Maybe it's just the high standards. Carlson's in. No, what are you doing? Just score it normally. Fifth goal, I actually think, could be quite important in this tie. Ball in. Carlson's there, and there is the fifth goal. Terry Cloti grabs the assist. Christopher Carlson hits his target of 33 goals for the season. What an absolute chap. Carriage. They're going to get something. Oh, please, no. That's a foul. We, we are actually going to give them a chance to score their third shot of the game as well. We're actually going to let them score their first three shots of the game. They've had three shots and they've scored all of them. <laughs> oh my god. Thank god we've managed to score our chances a little bit. Breda's ball in. Oh, it's, it's actually in! Nick Shiakanovic makes it 6-3 with the braid across. Shiakanovic reads it brilliantly and it's 6-3 up. No harm done, eh? I do love how we've just casually come along here and put six past Lazio. That is really not something you'd expect from us. Valencia's done brilliantly to read that. Cloty. Oh, isn't, surely can't be more in this game. Cloty's ball in and Carson's on the end of it and it's slide home by Valencia for seven. Suryuska seven, Lazio three. Valencia grabs his second goal of the game. I don't know what's going on, friends. Well, we're certainly making the home advantage count a little bit here. Lazio are honestly lucky to be anywhere near as close in this game as they are. They're lucky not to be 7 nil down, honestly. But there you go. I say lucky. They got the... Oh, hang on. Carson again. Oh, my goodness. Only us, eh? Could somehow concede three goals at home out of nothing and still win the match by four goals. 
that is that's some doing. Um, we've given ourselves a chance, a really big chance now in that second leg to just go to Italy and not lose by four goals. But if we play anywhere near as good as we have in this game, that should be an absolute breeze. This has been something else. Suniuska 7, Lazio 3. Uh, apparently, they apparently did have another shot in there. It must have been right before the penalty, um, which we didn't see. That was kind of interesting. So, yeah, they, they scored every shot on target, but we absolutely smashed them in this game. A dom demolition job. Two goals each for the strikers. Just everybody was perfect. What a performance. And with that, I think we can all agree it's been a pretty successful afternoon, <laughs> in a way. Uh, Besiktas, defeat aside, won every other match in there, too, and are really starting to look good. There's so many goals flying in. Um, even beat Gladbach with 10 men away from home is mental. Now, obviously, we face FC Copenhagen next in the league. So that's obviously going to be the start of the live call, but things just get tougher and tougher. We're, we're probably going to be in a Europa League semi this year, which is actually a very, very strong achievement for us, because I don't see FC Copenhagen in Europe still. We might be the last Danish team left, honestly. Wow. Ah, I didn't entirely turn into the lady from Titanic either, although I do bloody feel like it. It's 34 degrees in this room at the moment, and it is muggy as all hell. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this episode, I really, really hope you have. Uh, drop a like, that would be lovely. Also, I'm streaming tonight, probably the moment you finish watching this episode, actually. It's the FM Super League draft, so join me over on Twitch for an hour or two, perhaps. That'd be a new one for you. If not, I'll see you tomorrow. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.